Aarnur, son of Aernil II, a warrior like no other, and yet a poor king. Hello my friends, it's Carl here, and today we're going to be looking at the history of Aarnur, the last king of Gondor. Aarnur was born in the year 1928 of the Third Age, and during his time there was much strife in the kingdoms of men. The Numenorean lands were still divided into the Northern Kingdom of Arnor and the Southern Kingdom of Gondor. The Kingdom of Arnor was being besieged relentlessly by the Witch King of Angmar, and he had already conquered two of its provinces, that of Cardolin and Rudar. Only one province persisted, Artidane, which was the most powerful of the three, and yet its future was in doubt, for the Witch King's armies drew ever closer. Now at the same time, the southern kingdom of Gondor was still recovering from the Great Plague that had occurred in the year 1636 of the Third Age, and its forces were still very weak. When Eärnor was born, King Onderher was king of Gondor, yet his rule and line were not fated to last long. Sixteen years after Eärnor's birth, an army of Wayne Riders from the east descended upon Gondor, and King Onderher established an army to fight them off. Haradrim were attacking from the south simultaneously, and King Gondorher ordered Ernil, who was Ernil's father, to also rally an army to fight off the southern threat. To cut a long story short, their plan was put into motion, though it didn't work out as they had hoped. The Wayne riders had ambushed Onderher before he could set up defences, and in the battle that ensued, they killed the king and his sons. Ernil, on the other hand, successfully fought off the southern army, and he then rode north and defeated the Wayne Riders. Since the king and his sons were dead, Eärnil was chosen as the new king of Gondor, and thus Eärnur became the prince. In the year 1973 of the Third Age, the Witch King was ready to unleash the final assault to forever destroy what remained of the Northern Kingdom. The realm of Artidane sent a messenger to Gondor pleading for help from their southern kinsmen. On receiving this news, Eärnil sent his son, Eärnur, with a fleet and all the men he could spare, for he knew that if Artidane had to fall, the last northern bastion against Angmar's forces would be lost. Eärnur's forces sailed tirelessly, yet they did not make it in time. When they arrived, Artidane and its cities lied in ruin, their cities aflame and their people massacred. Now Eärnur was an emotional man, quick to anger, and what he saw filled him with wrath, and he decided to push through and bring the fight to Angmar. Now Eärnur's forces had landed in Linden, home to the elves led by Cirdan the Shipwright. Once there, Eärnur called to the elves and what remained of the northern forces to join him on his attack on Fornost, which was previously the capital of Artidane, but now stood as the Witch King's war trophy. The elves joined him, and soon a great army marched to the east, cleansing the lands from orcs and other servants of Angmar. Their host had yet to grow in strength, as soon another elf army came to join them. These elves were from Rivendell, and they were led by the elf called Glorfindel. As they reached Fornos, the Witch King himself came out to face them, and his power was so terrible to behold that many of the horses fled in terror, and Aeronor's steed was among them. The Witch King laughed, and this instilled Aeronor with fury, for he was a proud man. However, the Witch King didn't stay there to gloat, for he soon realized that what was left of his forces could not defeat the host of men and elves, and he fled, taunting Eärnur one last time. Eärnur, furious at being mocked, attempted to chase him, but he was stopped by Glorfindel, who told him, Do not pursue him, he will not return to these lands, far off yet is his doom, and not by the hand of man shall he fall. Eärnur returned home, his pride wounded and bearing a grudge towards the Witch King. And this wouldn't be the last time their paths would cross, for Eärnur and his father were not aware that the Witch King had fled to Mordor, and there he had once again started amassing an army. In the year 2000 of the Third Age, the Witch King led this army to attack Minsithil, a fort of Gondor. Eärnur's father, Eärnil, led an army to try and live the siege, but they failed. He then retreated, and Minas Ithil was conquered and changed into Minas Morgul, the Tower of Sorcery, and it was here that the Witch King set up his home. Forty-three years later, Eärnil passed away, and thus Eärnur became king. 
Now the Witch King was sly, and he remembered that Eirinor's fatal flaw was his pride, and thus, that very year, he sent him a challenge, to fight him in single combat, while also reminding him of the events that had taken place in Arnor. This infuriated Arnor, and he immediately wanted to accept the challenge, but his steward, Mardel, persuaded him not to go. However, seven years later, this challenge was repeated, and Arnor couldn't bear to feel like a coward or to restrain the hate and anger he had towards the Witch King. Before he left, Arnor left his crown in the Houses of the Dead, on top of his father's grave, and the crown would remain there, till Faramir picked it up once again to crown Aragorn, almost a thousand years later. Arnor then set off with a group of knights towards Minas Morgul. Its doors opened slowly, and he and his escort rode through, never to be seen or heard from again. It was said that Arnor did not inherit his father's wisdom, and that his only delight was battle, and he desired no wife. Thus, he was childless, and no one could be found to take up the mantle of the king. This is how the rule of the steward started, and they would rule Gondor until the king arrives once again. And thus, the story of Arnor, the last king of Gondor, ends. I find the story to be quite a thrilling one, and these open-ended endings always leave me wondering what happened. For example, did Arnor fight the Witch King in a one-on-one -on -one battle and lose? Or was he simply ambushed and slain? Or was he tortured and converted into a servant of the Witch King, such as we see in the game of the Lord of the Rings online? It's hard to say, though I'd like to hear what you guys think, so leave a comment below and we can discuss it. I personally think that the Witch King would have actually fought him in a one-on-one -on -one battle, just to add insult and mockery at having defeated him. I think he would get a certain pleasure out of it, knowing that the last king of Gondor was slain at his hands, after foolishly accepting a fight that he had no chance to win. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I tried a more narrative format for it compared to some of my older history videos, so if you enjoyed this more, please tell me so I can adjust my format in the future. If you feel I deserve it, drop a like, and subscribe to join our fellowship today. I hope to see you all in my next video, where together, we once again explore the wonderful world and lore of Middle-earth.